and the ACC doing that signifies that this conference has it together and that they're actually looking forward to a future, even with the attachment to the grant of rights deal that they currently have through 2036. Welcome into Crystal Ball College Football. I'm your host, Grayson Grunhafer, and today we're going to talk about huge news in the ACC as they have decided to endorse a new revenue distribution model that rewards success. It's huge. It's something we talked about a little bit last week. They had their big meeting a week ago. Uh, we're going to dive into that, talk a little bit about the ramifications, what it means for the conference, and how this specific model may have saved the ACC, at least for the time being. So we mentioned last week, presidents, chancellors, they all met, had a huge meeting. Uh, a topic that was going to be discussed was this new revenue sharing model of some kind. We didn't know exactly how it was going to play out. Was it going to be unequal revenue sharing using uh, the TV media contract? Was it going to be something where it became reward based, uh, based on what you did on the field? Um, or on the court, but it ends up going in that direction. And it's massive news, I think, for the ACC that they were able to sit down, come together, have a conversation, and reach a massive agreement. So how this is going to work, it's going to all come down to the games you win, if you win the ACC, if you make it to the college football playoff, you get rewards based on that. Uh, many of the reports that I've seen uh, up to this point, as far as estimations go, it seems like you could probably get in the $10 million range if you have a really, really good season. So if you think about that a little bit deeper, think about the Clemson with Deshaun Watson or Trevor Lawrence, the type of money they would have brought in would be the high end of that, maybe even more than $10 million, uh, during that run. Now, obviously, that's huge. Uh, you know, that gets you, I think this past year, ACC was around $39 million total uh, for each team. So it gets you, I mean, you're getting awfully close to $50 million, which, again, that doesn't get you to the point where you're the SEC or the Big Ten, but it does get you to a point where you're much more competitive and it gives you an opportunity to take what you do on the field and apply it to off-the-field things such as money, such as recruiting, such as NIL, facilities. Everything like that is impacted by the type of money that you could win because of this. Now, the model doesn't go into effect until the 2024-2025 season or essentially once the college football playoff expands uh, in the near future. And so, again, this is one of those things where you look at it and you go, okay, they've done unequal revenue sharing. And I've been here talking about it and uh, saying how that's never going to work. But this is a completely different form of that. Uh, going into the meeting, a lot of the talks were about how the seven schools that were upset about kind of the distributions they were getting based on what they brought to the conference there were a lot of conversations about them getting more money from the TV side of things, and that didn't happen. That's not impacted at all. Every school is getting $30 million that is guaranteed untouched. That's your baseline, right? Everything else is based on what you do on the field, and, and that makes a lot of sense. I, I think that, that that's something that I'm not surprised that they agreed to, but it is a step to getting things closer for the schools like Florida State or Clemson, and I think it's the happy middle ground. And for me, when I look at this decision and I look at a conference that came together and they decided, hey, you know what? We're not going to be able to do this unequal revenue sharing. This is going to make too many people in the room upset, but let's find something in the middle. Let's find a happy middle ground for everyone. And in my opinion, the ACC doing that signifies that this conference has it together and that they're actually looking forward to a future even with the attachment to the grant of rights deal that they currently have through 2036. Uh, again, massive news in my eyes for the ACC. Now, that grant of rights deal that everyone's been talking about and harping on lasting till 2036, that's the reason for this conversation. That's the reason for this decision, right? Because as these schools did more research, tried to figure out you know, what the legal process would mean, what the buyouts would mean, there just was no rational conclusion for that. There was no way that they were going to be able to pay the kind of money that was necessary. There was no way they were going to go through the legal process either to get out of something that, based on everything I've read, seen, or heard from sources, is extremely hard to get out of. And it's something that really does impact the conference in a negative way, but when you make a decision like this, you're able to even things out a little bit. And I think, again, for a school like Florida State or Clemson, 
which bring in quite a bit more than the other schools as far as what their uh, TV media value actually is, this is key for them. This is key. It gets you a lot closer to being competitive money-wise with the SEC and Big Ten when their new media contracts actually start to take place. Uh, but again, this is a step in the right direction, I think, for the ACC in general. It's a step that also kind of paves the way for other conferences to do similar things if they want to. I'm not saying every conference will do that. Some won't, for sure. Uh, but I do think it solidifies things in the ACC, at least for the time being, that these schools actually want to be in the ACC and that they're going to do just about everything they can to stick around, stay unified, and come together as a conference. Uh, later on this week, we'll talk a little bit more about the Pac-12, some things like that, and then also uh, bold predictions.